the top one or two percent wealthiest corporation owners in the United States have a huge incentive to fool us all. They want us to believe that black, brown, indigenous people and immigrants in America are to blame for why we have to work so hard, but still can't seem to make ends meet. So why are the wealthiest elites doing this? Why are they spreading propagandist lies in the hope that the general public will fall for it? Their fear is that the rest of us, the 99%, will realize that we're being played and will unite as a voting bloc. They have a vested interest in making sure we're uneducated and ignorant. They don't want us to find out things like the cost of corporate welfare is exorbitantly higher than the cost of funding safety nets for families that need welfare. groups that are historically marginalized and are still being oppressed today and who hold the least amount of wealth and power be to blame for the problems we're having in America? The answer is they're not. If we're convinced that it's the other people holding us down, then we won't hold the actual people who are responsible accountable. Here's the top things you need to know about the wealthiest corporations that influence American politics today. Many of the wealthiest corporations in America don't pay federal taxes. According to a report from CNBC that looked at the first year since the Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017 went into effect, you know, the one that gave the wealthiest American corporation owners huge tax cuts. Nearly 100 companies in the Fortune 500 had an effective federal tax rate of 0%. This amounts to approximately $40.5 billion combined. According to the Washington Post, of those wealthy companies that actually did pay taxes, their tax rate was lowered to 21%. But in actuality, they found loopholes and overall paid 11.3%, much less than the average family did in 2017. But here's the catch. For companies that are paying 0% in federal taxes or paying an exorbitantly low rate compared to families, they're not doing anything wrong. It's not illegal. It's up to us, the citizens, to vote in politicians that think this is ridiculous and unfair. Would you want to pay more taxes if the law said you didn't have to? Citizens United. Citizens United is actually a short name for the law that was passed that overturned certain long-standing restrictions on political fundraising and spending. So for the first time in history, anyone or any group could spend unlimited amounts of money promoting a political candidate via super PACs. When this concept is expanded to grant constitutional rights originally meant for individual people, it can have an anti-democratic and socially destructive consequence. The effects of this decision have unleashed a wave of consequences for our republic, most notably the erosion of the public's faith in the integrity of our democracy, a lack of policy outcome that align with the views of the actual Americans, and a deluge of big money that has drowned our political system. Corporations aren't people, they're businesses, and they have one goal in mind, and that's to make a profit. CEO salaries have accelerated exponentially. You've probably heard that the middle class is disappearing, and the split between the haves and the have-nots is growing much wider. But you may be shocked at just how much wider it is. Since 1970, rapidly growing CEO pay has exacerbated inequality in the United States. When CEOs are paid exorbitant incomes, this does increase high-level manager's pay, but the middle and the bottom of the wage distribution continues to be depressed or not enough for a full-time worker to rent a home in the United States and also have money left over to feed their family. What happens is these full-time employees end up needing to use the welfare system despite working 40 to 60 hours per week. We the people end up essentially paying to subsidize the average worker when their company refuses to pay a living wage. The top 1% of the wealthiest families in the United States have seen more income growth in recent decades than any other developed country in the world. The United States has the most uneven distribution of income and wealth out of any industrialized nation. 
And while income inequality is a fundamental component of the U.S. capitalist economy, 61% of Americans think it's gone too far. Today, the top 1% earners in the United States account for 20% of our country's total income annually. Meanwhile, the lowest earning quarter of Americans account for just 3.7% of income every year. Did you know that since 2002, health insurance premiums have increased 97% or three times faster than wages have? As a nation, the U.S. spends more on healthcare than any other developed country, but we have worse outcomes. How is this even possible? The answer is quite simple. We have for-profit healthcare. Our system of healthcare in the United States has one goal, like all corporations, and that is to make a profit. The truth is 75% of Americans don't have enough money saved to pay bills for six months or in case of a giant emergency. It's not a wonder that the number one cause of bankruptcy today in America is medical bills. The fact is that the United States stands almost entirely alone among developed nations that lack universal health care. Even some developing nations have universal access to health care, like Saudi Arabia, Oman, Costa Rica, Kyrgyzstan, and Cuba. Since 1990, housing prices have risen 56%. Full-time minimum wage workers cannot afford a two-bedroom rental anywhere in the U.S., and they cannot afford a one-bedroom rental in 95% of the United States. Black Americans comprise 40% of the people who are experiencing homelessness in 2019, even though they're just 13% of the population. The typical price tag to pay for college has exploded by 450% in inflation-adjusted real dollars since 1982. College is expensive for many reasons, including a surge in demand. There's also been huge increases in the need for financial aid. Many Americans may not be aware that financial assistance in the form of tax breaks and subsidies are given by the government to profit-making companies. When wealthy corporations get special handouts from the government, who do you think pays more in taxes to make up for these hidden tax breaks, subsidies, and loopholes? Hello, us, the 99%. According to data from the Department of Agriculture, even before the pandemic hit, some 13.7 million households experienced food insecurities at some point in the year 2019. This year alone, nearly one out of every four households has experienced food insecurities. According to Pew Research, the gap between the rich and the poor is the widest it's been in a century. Why are Americans perfectly fine with huge wealthy corporation owners prospering when it comes to basic human needs when everyone else is struggling? Why do we accept such low standards? Have we all been brainwashed to believe that if you're not rich, then you're probably not working hard enough and you don't deserve basic human necessities? To add insult to injury, this is all happening in a nation that boasts being one of the wealthiest nations in the world. The rich blame us for being poor. They think we just don't work hard enough. Well, guess what? I blame them. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I do live shows every single week on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern from my Angry Soccer Mom YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and remember to look out for my next video on hidden racial history in the United States.